Hello, this is JJ Squatchman, messenger of the Winston Wildman Research Organization. First, I'd like to start this video with a recommendation for an awesome book. I mean, this book is so well done. It's got photographs and illustrations and an archived history of notable historic encounters. The book was written by a friend of mine, Russell Easterbrooks. You may know Russell from various uh, Sasquatch forums and podcasts and interviews and, and shows. He's a very prominent figure with Sasquatch research. His book is called Searching for Sasquatch with Historical Observations and Interpretations and has a foreword written by the very famous Ron Moorhead, the man who way back in the 1970s was involved with the recording of the Sierra Sounds possibly, the, in my opinion, the best evidence for the existence of Sasquatch, even, even better evidence than the Patterson-Gimlin film, which I also believe is legitimate. On Russell Easterbrook's book, oh, you won't believe the beautiful illustrations and photographs and, and the attention to detail as he dives way back to colonial days all the way to present day, archiving the existence of the Sasquatch people. Various historical encounters can help us define and understand who these enigmatic beings are. Just an awesome book. Go to Amazon.com or I'll type in Russell Easterbrooks on, on a Google search engine and seek him out and get this book. Seriously. Now the topic of my video here sort of ties into the sort of thing that Russell Easterbrooks does. It's about Native American culture and Sasquatch. Now, the vast majority of Native American tribes across this country have their, their own history and recorded stories regarding the forest people. They can call them forest giants. Uh, that's a typical name. They have words. Uh, Sasquatch is derived from one of their words for the, the Bigfoot people. People often refer to them as Sabe in the Pacific Northwest and into Canada. Uh, it's just a very prevalent prevalent known animal. Sasquatch are even seen on their totem poles. Not as a mythological figure. They are seen with eagles and beavers and other typical earthbound natural organisms. And, and most Native Americans through generations of oral and written tradition know that these beings are real. And some of the, the natives of, of our early American history are reported to have traded with the Sasquatch people to have had uh, diplomatic relations with the Sasquatch forest people. And other traditions uh, are more scary, more frightening, uh, defining the forest people as those that abduct children and consume human flesh, giant cannibals. Uh, but, you know, the, the spectrum ranges from the, the benevolent and even spiritual guides of the forest all the way down to the scary cannibalistic abductor of children. Just a fascinating tradition going way back. One of the outreach techniques I've employed, other than gifting, which I do not recommend by the way, but I sort of painted myself into a corner with the gifting, and it has worked to my advantage thus far. Um, even to the point where they weren't all that thrilled with the peanut butter. I think the peanut butter I left was too artificial for them. You know, it has our man-made artificial ingredients. And they just, in a whisper on one of my recordings, just a flat-out request, in a whisper, do you have honey? Now, honey would be something that was more natural for them. Uh, and they probably are tough enough to withstand the, the, the honeybees in their wrath if they went after a honeycomb, you know. They're probably uh, tough enough to even withstand it, the bees and their stings. So yes, honey, a more natural alternative to what they crave and what they enjoy. That and apples. You know, uh, we have little apple trees on my property and come September, lo and behold, the apples disappear off the trees and off the ground. They're gone. Something comes in, I don't think it's all black bear. Something comes in and I don't think it's all deer and cleans out. Not only our blackberry bushes and our blueberry bushes, but our apple trees. So, as one of my outreach techniques, I've started playing an award-winning CD produced by Connecticut, Connecticut's own Joseph Firecrow. 
who is actually from this area, from the Winston Wildman area. And Joseph Firecrow was a proficient Native American musician and flute player. And his music is so exceptional. And the man was up for um, a Tony Award, I believe. So yeah, yeah, he didn't win it, but he was up for it. The man is a very, very accomplished musician. Unfortunately, he died young. But I play the Joseph Firecrow music for the forest people. You know, on the edge of the forest. I'm not intruding in where I think they are. I play it at the edge of the forest. And on one occasion, I let the recorder deep in the forest. So, on, on the recording, you can hear my music in the distance. Extreme distance. Now, I would think it's a safe bet that the Sasquatch forest people have uh, extremely sensitive hearing, along with uh, eyesight that allows them to navigate in the dark. Because these are survival adaptations. Their bodies have adapted into these large, rugged survival machines because they're out there in the wild and they're not sheltered in their little cubicle homes like we are, you know, and they're not vulnerable and weak as we are. They are tough and they are strong and they are adapted to survive the harsh, harsh environment of the Pacific Northwest and the New England area and even the South, even Falk, Arkansas and, uh, all through the United States, uh, just about, yes, actually, every state in the United States has forest person sightings, with the possible exception of Hawaii. So that, that is amazing. So I was playing this Joseph Firecrow music, beautiful music, and uh, on my recording, deep in the woods, some pops, knocks, and clicks were going along with the music. Pops, knocks, and cl clicks. I don't think it's human. There are no humans in these woods. It's private property. I don't believe there's homeless people camping in there. I would have found evidence of this. This is an unknown organism keeping rhythm with the Joseph Firecrow music. That's exceptional. It's exceptional and it's interaction. They appreciate the native uh, cultural vibe of the music, I believe. It's something that they're, they're familiar with. It may be something that they have an ancestral tie with. So, if you are a Sasquatch investigator or habituator, I strongly, strongly recommend that you try playing them Native American music. Now, some habituators go with different music from rock and roll to, to rap and hip-hop or to whatever, and who knows, they might, they might appreciate the spectrum of music, another thing that makes them more human than not. But I believe that strong cultural tie-in to the Native American music will work and has worked for me that that deep low voice that vibrated a barbecue grill that occurred on the night after i played them the native american music so they came in i believe they came into my yard to show their appreciation <laughs> to show their appreciation they enjoyed it they like it they are not threatening they are not uh dangerous I believe they see me as a friendly neighbor, and that's a good position to be in.
It's a good position to be in because my agenda, my mission, is to create a believable environment and to share it with the public, a believable environment of diplomacy between us and the forest people for our protection and for their protection, peaceful coexistence. Thank you.